Welcome to our fourth installment of Monday Match Points. I have Kim Kopnowski with me today. And before I let Kim get into a, a topic that we've had come in a couple times, I just have a few reminders uh, on some NSAA things that uh, have also been in my inbox over the last few weeks. Uh, the first one being duplicate numbers um, on jerseys, especially in lower level games. Uh, we've had a couple questions about how do we handle that if, uh, say, a JV roster or a uh, reserve roster has two of the same number? And we actually address this in our volleyball manual. So I'm going to go ahead and just read that language to everybody. Uh, uniforms worn by non-varsity teams do not have to be identical. They must have permanent numbers, but duplicate numbers can be on the roster. The only caveat there is that duplicate numbers cannot be worn by participants simultaneously during the match. And so one thing that uh, I think we would like to express is if that is something that comes up, let's have some preventative officiating maybe before the match starts. If you notice that to just have that conversation and find out, you know, is that something that the coach is planning on doing uh, in terms of having duplicate numbers in the match at the same time? And then let's try to find a workaround if we can before the match starts, because the last thing we want to do is have someone not be able to participate the way that it was intended just because of a, of a, a Jersey number, especially at a lower level game. So, uh, and again, if there's a question or something that comes up with that, feel free to reach out to me. I've had a few of those already this season. Uh, we can handle that on a case by case basis. And then also in terms of jerseys, I did, this is just a thank you to those of you that have done this, um, Jersey questions in terms of the legality of a libero Jersey. Um, we've had a, a number of those, uh, that's, always a tricky question. Uh, it becomes a little bit more tricky uh, when we have arm sleeves that don't necessarily uh, get factored into that decision, but it can make it a little bit more deceiving to, to figure out uh, those contrasting colors. So again, thank you for those of you that have brought some questionable ones my way. Uh, those are uh, questions that I like to go through. So uh, if you see some of that uh, as we wind down the season here, feel free to get that information to me uh, via email and, and we'll work through it. So with that, I'm going to kick it over to Kim. Well, good morning and happy Monday. Um, I just wanted to talk about blood on, on Jersey. Um, I had a situation this weekend at conference and um, it was a good reminder for me to pull the book out and review. And so that's kind of what I want to talk about today. Um, my situation, there was blood on the girl's elbow. She wasn't hurt. It's just that like a scab or something broke open. And actually the line judge, so part of our team, uh, let me know as R1 that he had seen blood on the jersey. The girl was trying to um, tuck it or pull the sleeves up so that we couldn't see it. Um, and uh, we were able to, you know, talk about it and take care of it right away. But in the book, the rule book on page um, 48 of our rule book, um, it talks about if there is, if you see blood, they need to be removed from the court until that uh, the uniform can be changed or the blood can be taken off of the uniform. And so if you go into the rule book, um, there's a special section on injury. The, the girl wasn't injured, there was just blood on the uniform. And so taking care of that right away. Um, now she did have to change her jersey because there was a lot of blood on a white jersey. Um, and so the changed the number, she went from like 15 to 19. Um, so there was no substitution. It was just changed in the scorebook. She became 19. This was in the first set. And so um, our, my R2, she did great preventative officiating and um, talked to the coach to make sure when he turned in his lineup that he had the new number for the girl that changed jerseys. So those are some things that um, happen that sometimes it doesn't happen often. And you have to really think about what's going to take place and how are you going to rectify it. But in um, the rule book, it says the uh, player must be, um, and, and coaches can take timeouts if they want to get that jersey changed, but they need to be removed from the court until, um, until that jersey is changed or the blood is no longer on the uniform. So that's what I have for today. And that was a question that, quite honestly, I had not had all season. Uh, and then over the last couple of weeks, it's come in multiple times. So uh, really good topic to address as we move into the postseason. So, so thank you, Kim. Uh, and with that, uh, that's it. all we have for you for today. Uh, thank you to everyone that uh, continues to, to watch these. We'll continue to put them out, you know, at least every other week uh, as we 
move towards the end of the season here and, and likely continue them into next year. So I hope everyone has a great rest of the season and we'll see you next time. Thank you.